the Skunk Works Org have recently undergone a complete reorganising of our structure. In order to bring about the combined arms gameplay we'd hope to see from the old branch structure of the Org, the Org now employs self-contained and multi-role task forces composed of ship crew we call Ravens, fighter pilots we call Raptors, and soldiers we call Raccoons. Some of the old methods remain, such as fielding ships under the SKWK tags, but in order to standardise our roles and to give Task Force Commanders an easier time of things, we're also now carrying out complete training courses from basic to advanced for all disciplines. In this video we'll see part of the Raccoon training at the introductory level. This is a very basic training aimed at familiarising new members with some core concepts of working as a fire team. And in this video in particular, we're looking at operations in open terrain. Again, this is a very basic introductory training being taught to new recruits. So it's kind of wordy, kind of slow, and we don't push you hard just yet. You're going to hear me talking a lot here, so I apologise for that in advance. If this isn't your kind of thing, that's okay. There will be plenty of videos coming up in the usual style, but as I am teaching some of these trainings with raccoons, I figured some of you might be interested in seeing what that's like. Let's meet some recruits from Troop 4 of Raccoon School. Welcome to introductory training for the Rebel Raccoons. Rebel Raccoons are the ground and EVA combat element of this org and this introductory training will just give you a brief overview of some of the core concepts of working in a fire team of four people. The structure of a raccoon team is four people split into two buddy teams. Generally, we will be operating as only four people. We'll be operating as a single fire team, so buddy team maneuvers is really, really prevalent. When I call your name, I want you to line up in this order. I'm going to give you three pieces of information to remember. These are the fire team that you are in, either Alpha or Bravo, a number between one and four, and a colour. I need each of you to remember what fire team you are in, what number you are in the order of March, and what colour your buddy team is. Crimson 646, you are Alpha 1, Team Blue. Go ahead and move to my left, your right side of the line. Mira, you are Alpha 2, Team Blue. Pluto, you are Alpha 3, Team Red. And Runaway T-Driver, you are Alpha 4, Team Red. Bravo, we'll do the same thing. Sound off with your name, number and colour. Bravo 2, blue. Bravo 3, red. Bravo 4, red. Outstanding. One of the key advantages of working in a team, especially in open ground like this, is the ability to use formations and to cover different directions. Each team member has a head, that head has eyes, and those eyes can be used to observe more than one direction at a time. We're going to form the simplest formation, which is the column formation. Column formation is one after the other, essentially, as opposed to a line, which is like shoulder to shoulder. If we face away from the sun and form a column in your order of march facing that direction. One day we'll have compasses and then we'll give an actual direction, but today is not that day. Okay, so this 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 column starts good. Mira and Crimson spacing's very good here. Bunches up a lot at the back, like Pluto and Runaway, you guys are way too close together. In any of the formations that we cover today, one thing that will be very, very important is the spacing between members. You want to be wide enough apart from each other that if a grenade goes off or that electron sniper rifle is fired, that you don't end up taking more than one casualty. It's a bit difficult with Star Citizen purely because of the way movement is scaled, you know, with the, the mouse wheel. When someone gives a, a movement order and they say walking speed or running speed, that can mean different things to different people. Um, to clarify one thing though, when we when we say running speed in a formation, we mean scroll all the way up on your speed limiter, but do not sprint. Sprinting is used, we'll use that when we, when we come to the combat portion, but for movement in a formation, you'll have walking speed, which is kind of like lower end of your speed limiter, uh, running speed, which is like max on your speed limiter, um, jog somewhere in between, um, but, but we're not talking about sprinting when it comes to moving a formation. The next important aspect of this formation is that each member, as I said, should be covering a different sector of the area around them. If all of you draw your weapons right now. Okay, so Crimson as point man here, we will be watching forward in the, in the formation. The rest would be what we call a herringbone, where Miro will watch the left, uh, Pluto would watch the right 
and Runaway who, outstanding, Runaway, outstanding. See, Runaway has been reading the training material. Runaway knows to cover the rear. Brilliant. Now, as you are moving along in this formation, you also want to be covering those areas of responsibility, but you do not want to be walking sideways or backwards because this will just mess with the pace of the formation and like the cohesion. Um, what you want to be doing, if you're in the middle of this formation, you want to be walking along like so. Weapon out. Walking along like so, but like checking, using free look to check your area as you're moving. Checking what the person in front of you is, making sure you're still in line with them. Checking your area again. Same for the rear of the formation. If you're at the back of the formation, like run away here, you don't want to be you don't want to be walking backwards like this all the time. But what you want to do is you want to be moving along, turning, checking behind, getting a good look, turning forwards again, turning, checking behind. Not too often, once every 10, 15 seconds is enough. Um, if you find that the formation is pulling away from you. Do not be afraid to tell your team leader that you need the formation to slow down to catch up. When you step off, sound off with your number and let, let the team know that you are moving. Likewise, when you stop, sound off with your number, let the team know that you are holding. Okay, Alpha, let's move towards that hill, the sunny hill, uh, slightly <laughs> to the left of Crimson's position. Alpha 1 moving. Alpha 3 moving. Alpha 4 moving. Team moving. All covering your arcs. Very good. Okay, guys, hold it there. Alpha stop. stop. Good work sounding off. Okay. Hold it. The last bit of information I want to give you on this formation. It will apply to other formations as well. Very good, Runaway. Very good. Is when you are in open ground like this, you want to take the lowest stance possible when you're when you're stationary. Like it isn't always possible to go prone in Star Citizen. Some terrain just won't allow it. Um, but if you can go prone, you should definitely should go prone. If not kneeling, uh, definitely the next best option. Just presents a smaller target to the enemy, means that you're less likely to get spotted, less likely to get hit. Outstanding. Very good. Good work, Alpha. Good performance. Let's go ahead and step it off. We'll go at uh, a slow jog. Two moving. Now, as you're moving, guys, you can adjust your speed to meet match the person in front of you. Just observing your arc as you move. You're massively increasing your chances of not getting ambushed or seeing where the first shots come from if you are observing your uh, your sector. Okay, zero, go ahead and hold up there. Two holding. So the next formation then we are going to be covering is the diamond formation. Diamond formation is also a movement formation, much like the column, you'll use it to cover ground. But the diamond formation is used when you are expecting contact or you've already taken contact. The reason for this is that from a diamond formation, which again is a movement formation, you can get into the line formation, which is a combat formation, from any direction very, very, very easily. It's the same principles as the last formation. Do so you want to sound off when you're moving, sound off when you're stopping, and cover your sectors as you move? Alpha, let's move towards that rising planet there ahead of Crimson. One moving. Two moving. Three, three moving. Team moving. Fingers inbound, uh, 20 clicks. And go a little bit slower for those of us walking sideways and backwards. Yeah, yeah. Don't be afraid to ask to slow it down, yeah. Slowing it down. It is never gonna be a perfect diamond. It's not like you don't need to you don't wanna you don't wanna concentrate so much on keeping a diamond that you are not observing the area around you. You know, that kind of defeats the object. It's more of an, an ideal to aim for. Like the important the important takeaway is that you are all spaced out well. You're all covering a direction 
and if you need to get into a line, if you take fire and you need to quickly drop into a line so you can start engaging, this formation allows you to do that very, very, very quickly. Okay, bravo, let's hold up here, get low, cover your, cover your sector. Two holding. The final open ground formation that we're going to be using is the line formation. This is like the opposite of the column. It's like shoulder to shoulder. Spacing still matters and being next to your buddy partner, so team blue, team red, also does matter. Now you'll notice with a line formation, we have the most guns pointing towards a known threat. Like if we know where the threat is, we can get the most guns on to that threat and engage that threat from the line formation. It also allows us to bound to close the distance to the enemy and then perform things like flanking assaults. Bounding is a manoeuvre, as I said, used to close distance with the enemy while always under constant cover or covering fire. Um, in order to carry this out, we need to know rates of fire. We need to know the, the rates of fire we use while suppressing. There are two rates of fire we're going to be looking at. One is deliberate fire. Deliberate fire is one round or one little burst of ammo every six seconds. So... Now this doesn't seem like a lot individually but when you have a group of people doing it it does add up and this rate of fire will allow a 30 round magazine to last three minutes of sustained suppressing fire deliberate fire is used when we are suppressing an enemy but we don't have a team moving we're just keeping our heads down or you know trying to land well aimed shots to kill that enemy the next is rapid fire rapid fire is one shot every two seconds like so. Rapid fire is for suppressing when we have a team moving. Rapid fire will expend a 30 round magazine in one minute of sustained suppressing fire. During a bounce, one team will be moving, the other team will be covering. Uh, it's up to the team leader which team is moving first. They can just say team, prepare to bound, red's moving first, for example. Three. In this case is normally deputized as a kind of like buddy team leader three will say red's preparing to move and then red will say moving they'll move i'm up they see me i'm down it's something they will say to themselves in their head count to three um i i tend to go with i'm up they see me i'm down out of habit but counting to about like three seconds nicely paced that will also get you into the right spot you know one two three and they get down again like so when they are down, they immediately begin shooting, like so. And they call three set, four set. After that, red team leader, that is number three, will call red set. At this point, blue knows that both members of red team have gotten on the ground, are ready to cover, and have begun firing. This is the point where blue team can be preparing to bound. Blue team will then run up to red's position. This is the important part. They will run up to red's position, at red's position, that's when they start their count or their little mantra in their head or whatever. And it's, I'm up, they see me, I'm down. Blue team again, immediately begin firing. Sound off, call that you're set. Blue team leader, that's you, Mira, will, will, will sound off team set. And that's red's cue to start moving. After some lengthy instruction, Alpha Fire Team was set to put it all together in an engagement and assault exercise. Again, this is an entry level training, so our training assistance would go a little easy. We're just trying to get our fire team here used to the maneuvers and communicating clearly. Still, adding a little drama to it doesn't do any harm, right? Crimson, get down. Okay. Down. Uh, well, let's get ready to let's get ready to bound. Red, you're bound first. You're staying red bounding first. You can go ahead and engage. Red, prepare, prepare, prepare to bound. Second target on the rocks. Taking fire. Red bounding. Red bounding. Red set. Uh, red three set. Four. Four set. Red set. Blue, blue bounding. One set. Two set. Blue set. Red pair bound. Red bounding. Red four. Uh, red three bounding. Bounding. Red three set. Full set. Blue bounding. Multiple hits. Multiple hits. You guys moved a little far. We're having to really run to get ahead of you. 
reloading. Red three. Two set. One set. Blue red, set. Red, uh, red prepare to bound. Red after this bound, begin flanking to the right. Understood. Red three, second all. Reds begin to flank to start right to the right. Red preparing to assault right. Red uh red three crossing, assaulting. Let me see cover fire going out here. Now more than ever you need the enemy's uh, attention on you. Our red three's moving up to these rocks. Ship fire. Ship fire. Shifting, blue shifting. Two targets down. Good work, guys. Good work. Mira, good call on having your team use this cover here on their advance when they're assaulting. Very good. The only thing I'll say, uh, there was a little bit of a lackluster support when they began their assault. Like, you quickly corrected it, so that's great. Um, but yeah, remember, when, when your team is, especially when they're assaulting, you need to be doing as much as you can to draw the enemy's attention to the, the um, supporting team. Of course, these shields can be scaled up to an entire squad, and we also include this as part of the training, as we see here with Troop 1. We'd both be engaging the enemy with deliberate fire right now. The raccoon leader would say, okay, raccoons, we're going to bound towards the enemy. At which point, Alpha, team lead would be like, Alpha, prepare to bound. At that point, everyone takes a knee. Even if they're prone, they all take a knee, um, get ready to move. At this point, Bravo is going to move up to rapid fire at the enemy. Alpha, they are going to mutter out to themselves, I'm up, they see me, I'm down, and then they're going to get down again. And when they're down, if you if you are in Alpha and you get down and you see that the rest of the team are ahead of you, or anyone is ahead of you, you're going to move yourself up until you're in line with them. Because of different armor sets and different um, stamina and things like that, you will all cover a slightly different distance. This is why when you when you drop down, you need to check that if you're further than your team, stay there. Never go backwards, always go forwards. If you look around and everyone else is behind you, they need to move to you. We are, once uh, we're down and Bravo starts moving, we lay down cover and fire, correct? That's right, yeah, that's right. Rapid fire, so one shot every two seconds from you guys, yeah. Whenever we got a team moving, it's rapid fire. If we're just plinking at an enemy in the distance over there, it would be deliberate fire. Okay, if everyone starts putting Deliberate fire down range first. Good work. Okay, raccoons, we are going to be bounding forward to meet the enemy. Alpha, prepare to bound. On your order, Nels. Alpha, move. Three move. Four moving. Three set. One set. Back to remember to move up to meet your team, remember that. Course that. Then call set up once you're, once you're in position. Force set. Uh, I got a weapon jam. Team is okay. set. Team is set. Bravo team, prepare to bomb. Bravo team, move forward. Set. One set. Four set. Team set. Alpha moving. Caroline, move up a little bit. One set. Two set. Okay, Mark, you're a little bit far again. Remember, I'm up this time, I'm down. It's all you need to go. It's not. Like he's sprinting a bit far. Three pushing for uh, Push yeah. forward to Mac, yeah, but Mac's gotta gotta shorten his bounds up a lot. Okay. Three. Set. Bravo team, prepare to bound. Bravo team, move forward. Two set. Bravo, you guys are doing outstanding, honestly. It's natural. It's amazing. Okay, raccoons, let's put some deliberate fire or rapid fire. Let's put some rapid fire on this uh, this collection of rocks, Hallie. 
Roger that. Bravo team, rapid fire in hostile position. Alpha team flanking. Move Alpha. Direction Alpha. Bravo check fire. Bravo team move fire. Perfect. Look at that. Rapid fire instant. Yep, perfect. Okay. Good work, guys. Good work. I'll hold fire. Three move. Two Four moving. I see two enemies. 12 o'clock. Bomb line formation. Okay. Blue move forward. Bob, they see me. Okay, good. Set. Blue is set. Red, prepare to move. Red moving. Contact left side of the rock. Visual. Keep moving, guys. You want to be at full, full sprint when you're moving here. So you want to sprint through this. Three set. Four set. Okay, red set. Blue, prepare for to move. Heard. Blue moving. Up. They see me. In and in. Blue set. Okay, remember, Kaitha, to move up to your teammate. At this point, you're quite a bit behind uh, Nils here. Go ahead and move up. One set. One set. Blue set. Rep, prepare Red to go. move. Four moving. Three once we loaded to lay down suppressive fire. Blue will be assaulting. Okay. Blue move. Blue assaulting. Nice and fast. That's it. Nice and quick. Red In check fire. Engage as you're moving if you need to as well, because you're going to see, you know, during an assault, you are going to see people becoming becoming visible as you're moving in. Contacts down. Very good. Outstanding. Okay. Brilliant performance, guys. Brilliant. Blue team moving. Set. One set. Team set. Blue team set. Red team. Red team. Prepared to bomb. Red moving. One set. One down. Blue team is suppressing fire. There's two down. There's one more behind this rock. Behind them. Oh, there he goes. He's down. The Raccoon basic training covers more, such as CQB, and more advanced follow-up training will also be part of Raccoon's journey, but those will have to wait for another video. I am very pleased with our current graduates from Raccoon basic training, and all of those that have attained the Raccoon qualification on their way to joining a Skunkworks task force. Similar courses are offered for both Raven ship crew and Raptor fighter pilots, and maybe we'll show a little something from those training sessions in future too. I'd like to thank all of you at home for watching, and I also want to send out a very special thank you to all of our amazing patrons, who you can see on screen right now. Thank you all for your very generous support of the channel. Patrons like you are what make these videos possible, and I am very grateful to all of you for following and supporting what we do. If you are thinking of starting Star Citizen, use the referral code in the description below to gain an extra 5,000 credits in game when signing up for an account. And for more information about joining the Skunkworks org, see the link to our Discord below.